It's not every day that you get to test a brand new 7 Series, but here we are in sunny California with the all new BMW 7 Series on test. There's a lot to talk about here. The updated styling, you've got refreshed interiors, new drivetrains, including an all electric 7 Series called the i7. Now, before we go ahead, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the Evo India channel, and leave a comment down below. What do you think of the new 7 Series' styling? Before we get to the driving, let's quickly talk about the styling of the new 7 Series because that is definitely something that needs to be talked about. Up front, you've got this massive grille. It's a very distinct face, very bold, very different, very polarizing. Let me know what you think about it. You've got a big kidney grille. This car has the M Sport kit, so it's completely blacked out. The headlamps are a new design. You've got split headlamps with the DRLs on top and the main beam below that. These DRLs can optionally be specced with Swarovski crystals and they look very, very cool. Below that, this bumper layout is part of the M Sport kit. You can get a simpler, cleaner looking design on other variants. Now, when you come over to the side, you've got other cool stuff going on. The wheels, they're new, obviously, for 2022. You've got a two-tone paint scheme on this particular car, though you can option it without that too. The wheelbase is longer. Now, this is not a long wheelbase 7 Series, but the wheelbase is actually longer than the L variants of the previous generation. So it is a very long car. It's taken a step up in terms of luxury. Will there be a long wheelbase? Very possibly. BMW says they're considering a Maybach-like higher-end variant, and that will be very cool when it comes out. Come over to the side, you've got very cool-looking door handles. These are new and they're also one touch function. So you can press the button here and they'll swing out on their own. Similarly, from the inside, you press one button, they'll fold in on their own. You really don't need to put too much effort in. Come over to the back and there's a lot of new changes here as well. You've got new tail lamps. These are slimmer than before. They basically debut a newish design language on the BMWs and you've got the badges at the back. You've got the 760i badge on this particular car. The 7 is actually larger than the 60i. So the 60i will probably get swapped out for other variants, but you can also get the i7 over there. Now the i7 has a few critical changes, very subtle compared to the regular 7 series. You've got a small i logo on the front grille and you've got a blue ring around the BMW badges. So unlike Mercedes-Benz that's positioning the EQS as a completely different model, BMW is making very subtle changes from their electric car to their ICE car. That's it for the exterior walk around. Let's head inside and talk about the interiors. Now, when you come to the interiors of the 7 Series, this is where things are really, really cool. You've got an all new dash layout, new seats, new interiors, everything is brand spanking new. In front of you, you've got a new steering wheel. This is the M Sport variant, so you do have an M Sport steering wheel. Behind you, you've got this new display. You've got a 12.3 inch unit for your instrument cluster. And beside that, you've got a 14.9 inch infotainment screen. This is a curved display, unlike what Mercedes-Benz does, and it's canted slightly towards the driver. Very minimal, very neat looking. Something that I really like is all of the crystal elements inside the car. So you've got a crystal gear selector, a crystal iDrive knob. You've got some crystal in the doors over here. All of that looks really, really high end, really expensive. The finish in the dash too, that sort of mimics this crystal finish. Apart from that, the seats, very comfortable, very plush. BMW is going down the sustainability route, so you can spec these seats in either Veganza, which is a type of material which is sustainable, or here you've got this woolly finish, which actually feels like a very comfortable couch. It's really nice. I've never sat in a car with this sort of interiors before, but I really, really like it. You've obviously got all sorts of features that are pertaining to comforts. You've got ventilation, heated seats, you've got wireless phone chargers, you've got a panoramic sunroof, Bowers and Wilkins sound system, all of the stuff that you'd expect of a luxury car, it's in here. Well, that's it for the interiors of the 7 Series. Now I know you want to know what it's like to drive, so let's get moving.
Right, so the 7 series. The first impressions that you get of the car are just the overall silence. It's a really quiet, luxurious car. So let's talk about the engine first. The variant we're driving first is the 760i. That has a 4.4 liter V8. We've seen it in many other BMWs. It now comes with a mild hybrid system that is mainly there for efficiency, but it can also add a slight bump in performance. So it can add about 12 bhp and up to 200 nm of torque uh, when you're really gunning it. In terms of overall output, you've got 537 bhp, 745 nm of torque, and those are more than generous outputs to keep this car rolling fast. Now, we're in the US, the speed limits around here are 50 miles an hour, little under 100 kilometers an hour, and getting up to these speeds is effortless. And at these speeds, it's the effortlessness of the engine that really stands out. If you try to gun it, it does sound a little sporty. You've got a nice gruff V8 roar in the cabin and it does pick up speed fairly well, but it's not super aggressive. It's not the type to pin you to the back of your seat aggressively. What really stands out though is the effortlessness, how effortlessly it sits at these speeds, how effortlessly it overtakes other cars. It's really, really enjoyable. Now, the platform, that's completely new for 2022 as well. You've got air suspension all around. You've got all sorts of trickery to make it more comfortable in the cabin. So you've got an active anti-roll system that essentially makes sure that when you're turning in the corners, it compensates for the roll by adjusting it with the air suspension. You've also got a rear diff as standard on this car. So if you do choose to drive it sportly, you can get a little bit more of that rear drive feel from this car. On roads like these, high quality, well, it's a little hard to judge because the roads in the USA are pretty much flawless. They're, they're nothing close to the conditions that we have back home in India. And so yeah, it's, it's not really representative, but the impression that you get is that it's a very comfortable car, that it's a very, very quiet car. It does feel a little bit firm over certain bumps and little broken patches in the road, it's particularly so in sport mode, but that, well, it makes up for it with the driving dynamics. You've got a car that feels very sharp. Your inputs are, so there is a slight bit of firmness in the suspension, but that balances out with the handling that you get. You do get sharp responses. When you're changing lanes, you do feel that sharpness in the chassis. When you're driving up and down these winding roads, you do feel that directness to the front end through the steering wheel. You do feel that willingness to turn. And that's a hallmark of BMWs. And despite the 7 being this huge, massive car, it doesn't let go of those traits. So it hasn't forgotten that typical BMW DNA of being able to handle well. That aside, cool tech in the cabin. You've got a lot of cool stuff going on here. You've got this augmented reality navigation in here. So basically, what it does is it projects the image of the road in front of you and it overlays navigation instructions on it. So it tells you where to turn right, it tells you what lane to slide into. It's really, really helpful. So you have a proper visual cue of where you need to drive your car right in front of you. That aside, this entire light bar, this crystal-like finish on the dash, it's actually backlit and it responds to different drive modes that you're in. If you put on the hazard lights, it flashes red. It's an interesting feature and it's very intuitive, you know, it works really nicely with the, the rest of the feedback you're getting from the cabin. So you've also got a very detailed heads up display, it tells you your speed limits, it tells you what speed you're at, it shows you what active safety systems you've got on. This curved display, nicely done, although I found the menus in here to be very, very extensive and complicated. I mean, we've spent about an hour in the car so far and We've been driving and haven't been able to figure this out properly yet. I'm sure with the most time you spend in the car, the more time you spend interacting with this whole screen, the menus, everything in there, you'll get more comfortable with it. But it's not intuitive straight off the bat. Other interesting features, the air vents are actually hidden completely. So they're tucked away behind this little silver panel over here. You can't see them. You've got little rubbery controls to control them, but they're completely hidden away. Very different from traditional air vents that Pretty much every other car has right now and something that i really liked about the 7 series is how expensive things feel in here how the materials used they feel expensive this metallic finish in the door around the speakers it feels nice 
the upholstery in the seat I mentioned earlier as well it feels really nice the crystal knobs and dials and buttons and all over here they feel really good and overall it's a very pleasant cabin to be in it's silent it's comfortable so yeah BMW is pushing the boundaries on the outside with its design but it is pushing boundaries in here as well the lack of air vents the crystal on the interior it's all very different we don't see the stuff in other cars and it feels unique you know and in cars like these yeah sure you do want something that feels unique and the 7 series does give you that if you can live with how it looks like on the outside in terms of engine options for India, we expect it to continue with the same engines that it currently has. So you'll get a six-cylinder diesel, probably badged a 730D. You'll get a six-cylinder petrol, probably badged a 740i. And you very well might likely get this 760i with the V8 engine. What we will also be getting is the i7, the fully electric drivetrain. So let's jump into that and see what that's like to drive. Right, so the i7, unlike Mercedes-Benz that has the EQS as a completely separate model line, BMW is doing things differently. Here the i7 is positioned as just an electric variant of the 7 series. And that means styling is the same, the interiors are the same. It's only the drivetrain that is different. On the insides, there's really nothing to tell it apart from the regular 7. You've got a blue ring around the BMW logo. That's literally it. Maybe the instrument cluster doesn't have a taco and small stuff like that. But visually, the screens, the layout of the dash, the layout of the center console, the seats, everything is identical. If you didn't know what you were looking at, you would think this is a 7 Series. And since everything's the same, I'm not going to get into the details of what's going on here in the interiors and stuff like that. We're going to jump straight into the drivetrain. Now this is a fully electric car, you've got a skateboard platform, so you've got the batteries at the bottom and you've got two motors, one on the front axle, one on the rear axle. Together they put out 537 bhp and 745 nm of torque. Now those figures are almost identical to what the petrol car makes, so is the experience similar? Yes and no. For starters, the silence in here is one level up on that V8. The 7 Series itself is very, very silent, but the i7, it takes it up a notch. And that's an inherent advantage of electric drivetrains. They are silent. And in a luxury car like this, that's something you want. And the i7 takes full advantage of it. It's very quiet. The only issue is you can hear a little bit more of the road noise in the cabin um, when you hit bumps, when you go over, say, the cat's eyes on the road. It's a little more audible in the cabin. But that aside, it's absolutely pin drop silent in here and it's actually very enjoyable. Performance? Well, performance is generous. What really stands out on the i7 is the instantaneous responses. So you get on the gas and it's instant. The, the responses are instant. There's no picking up of the revs, waiting for the turbos to spool, nothing of the sort. It just goes. And the acceleration is quick. The V8 to 100 is a little quicker. This takes 4.7 seconds. The V8 takes 4.3 seconds or 4.4 seconds. So to 100, it may be a little slower, but instantly off the line, this certainly feels quicker. Now, something else that's worth talking about is the My Modes. Now, this is something both the 7 Series and the i7 have. They dispense with traditional drive modes, sport, comfort, eco, all of that. That's all gone. Yeah, you've got personal, sport, efficient, expressive, relaxation. So there's these different modes. And while they do change the characteristic of how the car drives, what they also do is change how the interior is. So if you put sport mode on, the whole dash lights up red. Your seats actually hug you better. The, the bolstering on the side, it fills out a little bit more. And the whole idea is that it's not just the drivetrain or the chassis that responds to drive modes, but it's the entire experience. Um, the steering obviously gets heavier, but the UX UI of the screens also change. And it's a little more holistic. That's what BMW is going for. It takes some wrapping your head around, especially if you don't know what to expect in each mode initially. But 
once you get used to it, you realize what happens. So if you put in expressive mode, your sunroof opens up, all sorts of stuff happens. If you put in relaxation mode, all the blinds go up, the sunroof shuts. So basically the entire car is responding to the different modes. Another very interesting thing, and this is specific to the i7, are the sounds that the car makes. So the sounds of this car, well, it's an electric car, so there's no actual drivetrain sound, but BMW's program in audio to mimic, well, it's basically audio feedback to depending on what you're doing with the drivetrain. And these sounds have been developed with the famous music composer Hans Zimmer. So in personal, it's absolutely silent, but let me put it into sport and listen to this. Yeah? It sounds, I can't even describe it, it's very machine-y sound. I, I, it, there's really no way to describe it, but it's a very... In sport mode, it sounds almost like a dive bomber. Like a jet. But you put it into something else. Let's put it into... Expressive and it's musical almost. Listen to that. So, I mean, each mod responds differently. You put it to relax, it's a lower sound, much more mellow, not as sharp. So, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to get into the details of this, but basically, you get the drift. It responds to different drive modes differently and you get different sounds in different drive modes. They don't even try to mimic a uh, combustion engine, so they don't try to sound like an engine, but they're just their own thing. Which is cool, but it can get annoying after some time. Uh, one of the modes almost sounded like a mosquito buzzing near our ears, so I'm sure some people like it, so to each their own. The good thing is you can turn it off and you have complete customizability there. So the i7 then, it pretty much takes the 7 series experience and just adds in a little bit of novelty and a little more silence. It's quieter, it's smoother, it feels very just well oiled, right? There's no vibrations, no harshness, nothing. It's just pure like luxury, you know, it's just pure silence, it's beautiful. It really takes that luxury experience and moves it up a notch from the 7 series. No review of the 7 series will be complete without the back seat and expectedly this is a very comfortable place. Firstly, in terms of the amount of space I have, plenty. This is more than generous amounts of legroom, plenty of headroom. Now you need to remember that this is not an L version of the 7 series, it's the regular wheelbase and still the wheelbase is longer than the older generation L. So that has liberated a lot of room, that has moved the 7 series half a step up in terms of the space and luxury that it offers. There's plenty else going on in the back seat that's unique to the 7 series. First of all, your controls for the back seat, all of the functions, they're hosted in this 5 inch digital display in the armrest. Now, you swipe it up like a regular cell phone to unlock it and then you've got all sorts of controls in here. You've got your media controls. You can control the Fire TV, which is on this theater screen. You can actually control the angle of the screen so you can bring it down, bring it up this massive wide screen on the top over here. You can control the seat positions, this front seat position, my seat position, the massage functions, the ventilation, the heating, the blinds, obviously on the windows, the rear screen the lights in the car, the ambient lighting, and obviously the aircon. So this little screen here, tiny, but it has so much functionality packed in there. And to be fair, it's fairly well executed. The touch is responsive. It's not too clicky. The interface is much easier to use here than that main screen up front. So it's actually a fairly neatly integrated device. The other big talking point has to be this theater screen. So let me see if I can pull it down right now. This is the theater screen, but it's essentially this wide screen that drops out off the top and you can watch all sorts of stuff on it. So 
you can basically watch Netflix, YouTube. It's got uh, Amazon Fire TV natively hosted onto it. You've got, uh, you can game on it. And if you don't have internet connectivity, it streams all of the stuff through the uh, network that the car has. And if that's unavailable, you can just connect an HDMI cable or preload a movie in there and enjoy the show. You know, it's a great feature, particularly in the i7. Say the car's charging, you want to kick back, watch a movie, you can do that. You know, just flip down the screen, recline in the back, enjoy yourself. It's a really neat feature. So most luxury cars have twin screens over here, uh, but BMW's gone one step further and given you pretty much what they call a theater in the back. And I'm going to have to agree with them. That aside, the seats, they're really comfortable. You can recline them to a nice angle at the back. Just like the S-Class, the A8, you can flip the seat in front, kick out a small ottoman over there, kick your legs up, recline, enjoy yourself. You know, this is a car that you want to spend time in the back seat and relax in. And this back seat is genuinely, genuinely a very comfortable back seat to be in. In terms of price, the i7 is going to compete directly against the EQS, but unless BMW assembles it in India like what Mercedes is doing, I don't see them pricing it as aggressively. The EQS is priced at around 1.55, 1.6 crores. This I think would be a little more. The current 7 series is already in that ballpark. The new one will be a little more expensive and I suspect the i7 to be even more, maybe around 1.8, 1.9 crores. So this is not going to be an affordable luxury car, but you know what, if you can deal with how it looks, it is a fabulous car. And the good thing about owning one is when you're sitting inside it, you don't have to look at it from the outside. 